New England in the fall, the leaves, once a monotonous green, now explode in a riot of colors, painting the landscape like an artist drunk on inspiration. But capturing this beauty is a game of timing. Too early, and you're greeted by the lingering greens of summer. Too late, and the trees stand bare. This morning, Julian and I are going to a trip of a lifetime to see the best fall colors in New England. Our first stop, Bar Harbor, Maine, located in the far northeast point of the USA where colors tend to change first, a town that is as moody as it's beautiful. Bar Harbor can show you the brightest blue waters and the most vivid red cliffs you've ever seen, but turn your back for a moment and it might just be swallowed whole by a blanket of fog. So here we are at the edge of America, where the forest meets the sea. What will Bar Harbor have in store for us? There's only one way to find out. Welcome, Welcome to, to Bar Harbor. Harbor. Number 13 for us on our adventure to see every state in the USA and Mexico. I'm happy that finally we're visiting this part of the US that is New England. But this one is going to be only the first video of five that we're going to make in this region. Actually, six. Five states, six videos. You're right. And this one is specifically because it's the nearest one to the coast. We imagine uh, a coastal uh, autumn fall vibe. Yeah, in this yeah. One. Coastal fall vibes is what we're all about. And Martina has one special goal in mind here. I'm gonna eat as much lobster as I can. I think we're gonna try to have it for every meal. <laughs> and I don't think it's gonna be difficult because no. so far whenever we are entering the state we see a lot. And now so we're trying to debate like what where do we open the scene for you guys? What's the most main thing we can do? And I don't know about you guys but when I think of Maine I think of a lighthouse mm -hmm. like on the edge of some choppy waters so that's right. we found a lighthouse on the edge of some choppy waters. That's, that's gonna be the first thing that we're gonna visit so come with us. takes us to the only lighthouse on Mount Desert Island, Bass Harbor Head Light Station. Built in 1858, this iconic structure stands guard at the southwestern edge of Acadia National Park. It serves a crucial role, marking the southern entrance of Blue Hill Bay and warning against the treacherous Bass Harbor Bar. The light is still fully operational, so entering is off limits to visitors, but the surrounding grounds are open for exploration. So we make our way down to the rocks below. Wow, I think this is gonna be a good one. Oh, you like it, Juliana? We're at the edge of the USA. That's right. And it feels like that. It feels like, it feels like flat earth people would have a field day right here. It just looks like it drops off. <laughs> if Martina and I could figure out a way to travel like where we're in fall all year long, we would. Fall is our absolute favorite season. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm very excited about this road trip. It's just, I've been glowing and smiling and just so happy since we touched down. <laughs> every time I see a leaf fall, every time I see a red tree, I'm just like, yeah, yes. <laughs> There's not a lot of parking over here, so it's a long line, but it's totally worth it. Uh, there's only like, what would you say, Yulena? Like 15 yeah. places to park? Yep. With a population of over 5,000, Bar Harbor is the entrance of Acadia National Park. Most businesses here run seasonally, which means that the people here are some of the most interesting and well-traveled folks you will end up meeting. You earn what you earn during the season, then spend the rest of the year traveling, doing seasonal work somewhere else, or braving the main winters. So far, in a couple of houses, and also in a couple of vehicles, we see these cages that um, they used to, to trap lobsters. So oh, I can almost smell it already. It's kind of funny because for us in California, lobster is like such a treat. But here, you see it on the side of the road, so accessible. 
that it's almost like, why would you stop at McDonald's on your road trip when you can just stop at like a lobster shack? And with such high and low seasons, you can imagine that the big box hotel brands aren't keen to be here, which means travelers are blessed with local inns and motels lining the way into town. And these inns and motels aren't the same ones you'd find on the edge of a highway somewhere else in America. These are charming, family-run businesses, and Main Street Motel is hosting us for the night. Fully renovated in 2022, this downtown gem offers modern yet simple rooms with all the essentials, smart TVs, refrigerators, and microwaves. And these beds were like sleeping on a cloud. And let's be honest, Bar Harbor can be expensive, but this motel offers really good rates considering they're in such a hot spot. You're right on Main Street and you can leave your car here and explore the town on foot, which is great since parking anywhere else is a hassle. But what makes Main Street Motel special is the hospitality. The staff were so friendly, it makes us wonder why we have not stayed in motels before. And for those of you who can start your day without caffeine, they offer free coffee during the day and hot chocolate and tea are available 24 seven. What more can you ask for? After setting our things down, it was time to start looking around town. This is a charming little town. It's beautiful and the vibes right now are amazing. We already fell in love with this place. And it's like the kind of town that it looks like they took it out from a, from a film. Oh, one of the cool things that we saw whenever we were driving to here is like there's signs that you that you have to be careful about the moose. I never, I've never seen one in Mexico. We don't have those ones. So it's cool if we can see one. But so far, there's one over there. <laughs> As we meander through the streets of Bar Harbor, we find ourselves drawn into the gift shops that line the way. And they're charming, honestly. They could sell us air in a jar and we'd buy it. But instead, we made our way to enjoy today's catch of the day, something we've been waiting months to try, a good old fashioned Maine lobster roll and we know just the spot. Thirsty Well Tavern is the name of the place where we decided to get our lobster roll. Today I'm a thirsty well, <laughs> and also a hungry well. Thirsty and hungry. Oh yeah. I like it, that's our style. And this thing, it looks simple. Lobster, mayonnaise, simple piece of bread, but together, it makes magic. For me, without mayonnaise, but yes, it is magic. Also, you can ask the side. I asked for clam chowder because it, it looks great. And we're in New England after all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> good. It's warm. Good because it's chilly. It's not chilly. It's chowder. <laughs> mm. You're right. I always get confused. <laughs> Shout out to our waitresses because they were great. And also they let us know we have to order blueberry. Yeah, more blueberry things. Because Maine is known for their blueberries. Look at us, we're finishing another sentences. We did that like since eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Also, another thing they told us, which was interesting, is that it's never normally this foggy mm -hmm. here. But, you know, I don't mind. It's like a little spooky. I love it. I think it adds to the charm. For me, I'm like, this is this is what I'm looking for with fall. But we'll see if tomorrow it clears up. But in the meantime, what do you say? We kind of take a look around town some more. Yep. And then, uh, I love that. Like, we're going to catch you guys tomorrow morning. The foggy streets of Bar Harbor at dark guide us home, where we pass people sitting around fire and parks covered in a layer of mist. It has Yulena feeling all nostalgic, like she's a kid on Halloween night just waiting for her parents to finish dinner so she can go get some candy. It's her first real autumn night and there's magic in the air. This trip is already passing our expectations and we can hardly sleep wondering what day two will bring. You need to grab a cup of coffee on your way to get your cup of coffee. <laughs> Hot medium blueberry macchiato. Thank you. Thank you. You know what, Martine? Today could be the exact same day as yesterday, and they would have no idea based off of how it looks. Yeah, it looks like the same weather as uh, when we arrived. Yeah. For coffee, we went to this place. What was the name? Acadia Perk. It looks just like the logo from Friends, and it's adorable. That's right. And Juliana grabbed this amazing coffee that has a blueberry yeah. syrup. Blueberry macchiato, it's their specialty. But they had a bunch of other fall flavors yep. too. That was what I was originally gonna get, but I never seen a blueberry drink like this, and you 
can't go wrong. Oh, don't worry. We're gonna go back for another one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then for food, we went to this place called Graffiti Donuts. You grab two nice donuts. What did you grab? Cinnamon. Oh, cinnamon sugar. Uh -huh. and so for me, fall. And for me, blueberry. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna grab these very fast because we have our first activity that you wouldn't think it's a morning activity, but we're gonna do it in the morning. I'm pumped because one little goal we also have is to see the fall colors in as many different ways as possible. Mm -hmm. And so our first way is by kayak in the water. Let's go to the water. This is what I'm talking about. Look at that. Blueberry all the way. Yeah. So we have some time to kill over here before our kayak tour. That's why we're walking over here in the short path. Actually, we needed to do that yesterday, but because it was too foggy, we thought today is gonna be better. But because it's that foggy, let me tell you something. The colors of the leaves, the reds, the browns, the oranges, its uh, it looks more beautiful. At least that's the way we see it. So we're having such a good time over here. We meet up with the team at Coastal Kayaking Tours, who have invited us in for their harbor tour. After delayering to get into our gear, we realized at this point we were wearing identical outfits. So Phil and the Amazing Race team, call us whenever. Really, we're ready. Fashion show. <laughs> we're on the catwalk. Oh yeah. Welcome to the runway. Runway. Now we gotta walk through town like this. <laughs> our fashion show continues through town as our guide lets us know that we may be able to see some porpoises and seals today if we're lucky. So we're gonna go down there and hopefully we see these guys today. That's our porpoise. In life. <laughs> our porpoise in life. You like my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all tour. <laughs> Well, we're all seated. Yeah, right now we're learning how to use the kayak, but I think we can control it very well. Oh yeah, and hopefully we see some fall colors. What do you say, should we paddle? Let's do it. <laughs> Tell me like a couple words to describe this, Martine. There's no words, that's a problem. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's not cold, it's not hot. It's easy and the best time. I, I strongly recommend you do this activity. It's beautiful, beautiful. We saw flecks of color peek through as we kayaked past the Porcupine Islands, but what really took us by surprise was being up close to Maine's lobster industry. We're getting a chance to see it up close and personal. Maine issues 6,000 lobster licenses, and this industry is taken seriously. Each license allows for 800 traps, and it's not just a free-for-all. There are buoys in the water, and the color of the buoys indicate whose territory it is. Lobstermen have a system. They lay traps on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then it's pickup time on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And when it's time to cash in, dealers are on standby, ready to unload the boats and haggle for the best lobster prices. When they pull those traps, each lobster gets measured. Too small? Back you go, little guy. Grow some more. This is insane, Martine. It is. It is. Beautiful. You're like swallowed in a blanket of fog, but you can hear the ring of the bell, the sound of the lobster fishermen like pulling up their cages. I don't want to go. I know. My arms are tired. <laughs> Mine are too, and I think we've worked up an appetite. <laughs> And just when we thought it was foggy days ahead, sunshine broke through in an instant. Oh, wow. Holy cow, did that open up? Yeah. Right now, yeah. just well, arriving to Bar Harbor, just it clears up, like, in three minutes. Yes! So beautiful. It's up, insane! And we're having the best view of the city from the water. It's like the fog has lifted and it's a whole new city. Perfect timing too, because we have a lot more to see today. So it'll be good if we can actually see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if the weather does end up changing, it doesn't even matter because when life gives you lemons, order more lobster. Do we even need to say any more? <laughs> I think the chunks of lobsters talk by itself. Seriously, I can't wait to dig into this. We're at Dog and Pony Tavern. We were told that, well, Bar Harbor actually has this whole like lobster tour on their website where you can find all the best places to have lobster. 
and you know we've kind of figured that lobster rolls we can't do that for every meal so yeah, well we shouldn't yeah we shouldn't <laughs> We gotta mix it up. So That's right. we saw that on the recommendations they had Dog and Tavern, Dog and Pony Tavern, which is known for their lobster mac and cheese. I mean, seriously, just look the parmesan over here, chunks of lobster, as I already said, <laughs> and it comes with garlic bread. And uh, funny enough, this spot was actually a great one to fly our drone since you can't bring drones into the park. That's right. And we met a couple that was so so friendly and watching mm -hmm. the entire time that I was flying the drone, and uh, they were just. Fascinating. So shout out to them if they ended up finding our channel. You guys made our day. Yeah. They name our. Oh yeah. They name our, uh, our, drone. our drone Esmeralda. I was like, that's the most random name, but sure, we're we gonna take roll it. with it. <laughs> Look at this. This is the size of a chicken nugget. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I didn't think mac and cheese could get any better, but. Man has, proved, man has proved this wrong. That's right. With full stomachs, we head back to the car and in search of more full foliage. Oh, and by the way, Acadia National Park is right in the backyard of Bar Harbor. So we heard it's a great place to have hikes. That's why we're here <laughs> and we're ready. Yeah, the one that we want to do is called Beehive Hike. I've heard that it is like not best for those afraid of heights. No. I think we'll see what they mean in a bit, but families seem to be doing it. I think we could do it with our camera. Yeah, a little kid's doing it, we can. <laughs> yeah. Or at least we can try. Yeah, exactly. And the fall colors here are out. This is where we're seeing fall in action. So I think this is gonna be a freaking awesome hike. Let's do it. So here's where things went wrong. We start walking this idyllic path, loving the foliage we're seeing and stopping to stare at each leaf that falls from the tree. But as we look up, we see where we're heading and we realize this may be a bad idea. Yeah, um, at this point in the video, you may be asking Juliana and Martine, what are, what are your outfit choices for this hike? <laughs> we didn't bring any workout clothes. So we made it about, I don't know, 15 minutes into the hike and we realized we were wildly underprepared plus because of the fog we could see that from up above the viewpoint we wouldn't see anything so change of plans now Acadia Park if you're here and it's a good clear day there's so many great hikes we have a whole backup list of hikes if this one didn't work out but I still don't think any of them will be good with the fog so what we're gonna do instead is Park Loop Road which is an amazing road to witness some fall foliage it goes along the coast and we're just gonna pull off wherever we kind of feel like it so started off over here. So this is our first stop. It's so cool still to see like the trees right here against the ocean. We're still gonna have a good time. Believe it or not, there's people swimming. I know. And they must be from somewhere colder than here. <laughs> much more our style. Why sweat when you can sit? Now, don't let the name fool you, Park Loop Road is not just any road, it's 27 miles of pure, unadulterated New England splendor, designed by the Rockefeller family back in the day. And in the fall, it's like driving through a Bob Ross painting if Bob Ross also dabbled in autumnal psychedelics. If today was clear, we'd be able to see the Cadillac Mountain, the tallest peak on the North Atlantic seaboard, where you can watch the first sunrise in the USA. But with visibility low, we keep our sight sets on what's in front of us. The next place in the list is this one that is called Thunder Hole. And this one actually, it looks better with this type of weather. You gotta work with the conditions that they are giving to you. Thunder Hole sounds like a heavy metal band, but it's actually a rock formation that mimics the sound of thunder when the waves crash into it. Very on brand for Maine, if you ask us. What if there's a Yeti or a Sasquatch? That's a great question. Just keep driving. <laughs> so, we're cruising along and we start to notice the next batch of spots has a theme. Otters. Otters just so happen to be Juliana's favorite animal, by the way. First up, Otter Point, where, spoiler alert, we didn't see a single otter. But hey, the views are stunning, so we'll let it slide. Next, we hit Otter Cliff, which, contrary to its name, it's not a cliff made of otters, it's actually just a granite precipice. Still no otters, but that's fine. Maybe we're taking the name too literally. 
And finally, we arrived to Otter Cove, where we'd love to be greeted by an otter welcoming committee, maybe even an otter mayor. But no, it's just another ridiculously beautiful spot, maybe our favorite on the trip. Sorry, this is my duty as a man. <laughs> otter Cove is a place that you could probably spend hours sitting, and there's no one else here. So <laughs> calm, so beautiful. Yeah, it's like glass and we were just having fun skipping stones. Well, and by we, I mean, I was watching you. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is so beautiful, so calm, so peaceful. That reminds you two things, a fairy tale or a horror movie. You know what, the more, <laughs> the, more you, the more I think about it, I think you're right. What do you say we head to the next spot? <laughs> That's good. It's a place that exists just to enjoy, maybe like this whole park. Maybe like this whole state, actually. One of my favorite parts of getting to visit every state in the USA and Mexico with you is getting your opinion when we see new US states. So right. what did you think or what did you know about Maine before we came? Oh, well, two years ago, it wasn't on my map. It was, I know it wasn't the US map, but it wasn't in my map. I mean, I didn't knew um, Maine existed. <laughs> but right now it's good. I, I, I'm enjoying so much over here. It's full of nature, uh, which I love. It has this national park. It has amazing food with the clam chowder and a lot of lobster. And it's beautiful. I mean, especially during this time of year, that is the, the fall. Well, I know that now I know why people get crazy to come over here. It's completely gorgeous. So I'm enjoying myself. And as we continue the rest of our drive watching the trees pass us by, the sun starts to break through again. We arrive to the scenic overlook. And we got lucky. The sun is up right now. For a moment, we can't help but wonder, which travel deities did we please to score this kind of cinematic gold? In this moment, as we drive back into town, it starts to feel like the colors are changing in front of our eyes. And it's in this moment, on Main Street, where we realize magic still exists, that each ending is also a beginning, and that the world, for all its complexities, still holds moments of pure, unexplainable joy. So we promised you guys that we're gonna eat as much lobster as we can, and we're keeping the promise. We're doing attendance here. Who has been around since we were in Holbosch at the beginning of the year in Mexico? Do you guys remember when we lost our minds over that lobster pizza? And we really thought that was the only place in the world that had it. it turns out, Pat's Pizza here in Bar Harbor also has lobster pizza. And we did specifically search on Google to see if there was a place that did it. This is the place. It's not on the menu. You gotta ask about it. Oh, look at it. It's a little different than what we had at Roots and Holbosch, but I think this is gonna be delicious. Ah, lobster pizza. The culinary paradox of our time. It's like wearing a top hat with jeans. On one hand, you've got lobster, the epitome of fine dining. And on the other, there's pizza. And it shouldn't work, but in our experience, it does. I'll be honest. The first bite, I think I have lobster, but no, I think it has also has bacon. That's why I didn't taste it. But let me taste the lobster. This is the lobster, mm, good. But I'll be honest, the ones that we have in Cold Bosch, I think I like it better. Well, maybe in another life, you and I would have worked seasonally in Bar Harbor because this place is freaking awesome. But we have other places to see. <laughs> that is correct. So we're gonna leave you guys over here a video so you can watch our adventures. So long. Travel well. And make the world your neighborhood. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.